Can marriage indeed be between two people of the same gender, or must they be of opposite sex? One of the problems is the word in itself. People have difficulty in accepting marriage as being more universal than one man and one woman. Why are we considering the issue this week, when it seems we have long ago embraced the notion that all loving relationships are equal and valid and worthy of respect? Sim simply because our current processes do not reflect our testimony to equality. The couples of opposite gender have opportunities for marriage that same couples, same sex couples do not. As Quakers we can change some of this but not all. But much has changed already. In the first place, our own opinions and attitudes of friends have changed, clearly changed. Secondly, the wider society has changed. The Civil Partnership Act has been a landmark in both responding to changing attitudes and in raising expectations. It confers on the participants rights and, responsibility, rights and responsibilities identical to civil marriage. But marriage in a secular sense, as a legal union, and not as an act of witness before God and the world. The state recognises and legitimises same-sex relationships, gives those in such a relationship equal rights with those in opposite sex relationships, but not, does not afford them quite the same status. Gay marriage is not on offer. For many gay and lesbian people, what is missing is the religious and spiritual aspect declared before and to the world. In Quaker Faith and Practice 2246, what seemed essential to us was the public witnessing of a commitment made before God by one's worshipping community who then also took a responsibility to uphold it. Hence, many friends in same-sex relationships have followed a civil partnership by a meeting for worship to celebrate that commitment. And others have not, apparently happy to know that they are loved, supported and upheld by their meeting, with no need of further witness. Therefore, friends have equal rights in law, but not equal treatment. And within our current legal framework, we know that equal treatment with Quaker marriage is not possible. Can we as Quakers have something that is equal to marriage, but not the same? Moreover, can we do so without trespassing on the feelings of those who see marriage as sacred between a man and a woman? Is it possible to have an alternative, a gay marriage, that does not dilute the gravity felt by many of us still of a straight marriage? And can we come together and say that such a union is placed in a spiritual context, with divine assistance or with God's help? If and when we arrive at that place, we can then consider how as a community, we record such unions, for presently only marriages are recorded in the annual returns. To quote Quaker Life, Quaker faith and practice needs to establish right ordering for the conduct of all such meetings for worship held to celebrate committed relationships. Records of all such meetings for worship should form part of the returns to Britain yearly meeting. But, if we are in so many ways united, what separates us? There is a feeling often expressed that since this issue has been promoted as one of equality, those opposed to having same-sex partnerships on an equal footing with heterosexual marriage have refrained from speaking for fear of oppose, opposing equality and of the rights of all, and for fear of seeming homophobic. And we know from the soundings we have taken that a more traditional view of homosexuality is earnestly held by a number of friends. We need to embrace one another, to share our misgivings, objections and reservations. The purpose of our sessions at York Yearly Meeting were to act as a threshing exercise. And I am sure we all held York to be a safe place for difficult conversations. Yearly meeting in 1994, minuted after difficulties over what should go in Quaker faith and practice on sexuality. While our own individual experience does not identify with every ex extract, we recognise in love 
the friend whose experience is not our own. We pray for ourselves that we may not divide but keep together in our hearts. It might be difficult for some of us as we share our thoughts with others, possibly with diametrically opposing views. But we do need to move on so we can speak and act in a way that demonstrates our commitment to equality, which we know experimentally. We need to seek discernment together so that we can give corporate expression to our inner experience. And before I finish, I would like to return to those four darling children of mine. I found this conversation on Facebook between number one son and his partner. Christopher, here I am writing on your wall for all to see. Love you, kiss kiss. Paul, love you too, kiss kiss. Christopher, thanks for making that delicious homemade pizza for tea. Paul, it is a pleasure. Didn't come out as well as I wanted though. Sad face. It'll be better than next time. Smiley face. It lacks the eloquence of the poet and the depth of the sage, but nevertheless it is certainly from the heart, and not entirely different to Jesse and Mary. And I'm sure neither of them is thinking of marriage. Number one daughter might have been heading for a big Catholic wedding, but I'm afraid it's off. Number two daughter has promised her girlfriend in Australia that by the time she comes next to England, gay marriage will be legal. I hate to disappoint her. And number three daughter, she's a good Quaker and holding out for the right Quaker boy to have a proper Quaker wedding, followed by a ring and share. Four young people, equal in the sight of God, with very different hopes and expectations for personal relationships. They don't want the same thing, but they do deserve some form of equality. Yeah.